Hi, my name is Peter Opals Crow. I'm Naya Narugu. I am Narugu, which is a tribe from the snowy mountains or the high country of New South Wales. And you know, think of ski fields, and that's uh, the area my ancestors used to roam. I've kept making art all my life, actually. So you know, it's a strong sense of who I am. I feel like I can communicate a bit better um, in a visual way um, than using word. So I actually do a lot of variety of stuff, co-set designing and mask making and a mural. I guess I'm exploring indigenous themes, hidden histories, uncovering the truth from erasure. Being living in the now as well, being an indigenous um, person living now and looking at the intersection of being queer and Aboriginal. There's lots of aspects of my work, but they're usually um, based on my lived experience, so that's been really important. I've always been influenced by activism. I guess, you know, as a young gay queer person, things were happening around HIV and AIDS and a lot of homophobia and yeah, negativity, so I've always used art as an expression for that. And then around my Aboriginality, I've always loved political posters, slogans, catchphrases, for me to speak about the things that are important to me. Today, I'm just gonna show you some things that hark back to that. And my art has always been a bit influenced by street art and um, aspects of that. Um, I use collage a lot as well. And so um, I've been collaging a lot of old colonial imagery um, that I did for a project a few years ago, but that imagery has stayed with me a bit and it's like re-visioning old prints of Aboriginal people that was done by the coloniser and giving them new life. Um, yeah, so, and give, put them into a, a new context as well. Two techniques I'm gonna to show today are just rough cut stencils and collage as well using a chisel box and um, yeah, I often use just cereal boxes or leftover boxes. They make really good little easy to make stencils. A lot of stencil art uses photos and light boards, but I like mine to be just really rough. Yeah, I call them rough cuts. Copying this dingo, I'm just gonna turn the dingo into a stencil that I'm looking at and I'm just roughing it out. And I'll work out what parts I want to cut out. But just have fun with it, you know, like, you want something you can repeat over and over again. And I find the cereal boxes work really well. And I'm using um, scalpel. It's not an exact science and, you know, my art's not about being exact. I think sometimes my art reacts against everything looking really finished and polished. And there's no right way to do a stencil. You know, you've just got to be careful that the pieces don't, that you don't overlap and big chunks of the design fall out. But think about that, they need to be separate. Wherever there's going to be a space, you know, you can, paint's going to go through it, so. You want to do big, bold shapes. 
I often say the dingo is the totem that found me. As I've come more and more stronger in my Aboriginality, it's really clear that the dingo is sort of a totem of self. And that's really just a basic dingo stencil. There's a piece of paper there, or I, you can put it on canvas. Yeah, you just need a brush. This one will probably work really well. You want it quite thick and then you just want to punch down. So you can make these as big or small as you want. So I might um, use this as a repeating pattern on the background of my work or to add depth and texture. Yeah, so that's just a simple thing. And I'm a bit of an edge person, so I, I don't mind it not being perfect. I went through the shiny side. That's just a really simple dingo stencil. And sometimes it's really interesting to go off the page. And then I'd probably come back to it with it with like lots more textures and is glitter there. I just use lots of different media on my work. PVA glue is what I use for collaging. Mix um, it with a bit of water um, till it gets to about that consistency. I'm using, you can use anything for collage, but again, as an Aboriginal person, I'm using some of these old colonial imagery. Um, and I often like using them and putting them then through an Aboriginal, through Aboriginal hands. I might mark out a space to collage into. And then I like tearing. Tear shapes, not to, you know, if I want to, an exact edge, you could cut around it, you know, you can do that as well, but I might feel the shape. And when you tear, you know, you, you get left with a, with that ripped edge, which is, can be really um, lovely, I think. And I like, in art, I like to show how it's sort of constructed and it's taking a picture and um, abstracting it. There's a little dog here, so... A colonial dog. Um, yeah, and you could cut around that, you know, and in the past I've done things. You can do that as well, you know, direct collage, um, cut that dog out, but, you know, I know it's a dog. I'm going to put it into a new shape and give it a new life. You could use anything for collage. I use stickers, you know, $2 shop source of material. You know, you can print things off. 
Sometimes I grab pictures off the internet, just print them out and recollage them as well. Yeah, that's just one technique. I've done traditional collage of the figures um, and overlaid them and used paint and stickers from $2 shops. Uh, that was for a series about Ballarat and this is um, a mining registry office and I was sort of trying to capture the whole feeling of what it's like for the mob being colonised and seeing these buildings go up um, and trying to live in this new world. Um, yeah, they're just, and that's 1856, so um, what was it like back then and putting these figures into a new beginning. So, you know, that's more traditional collage where, and then I've, you know, come back into the collage with textures and um, colour and watercolours and to get to a finished work and that's all done on a canvas board. On a bigger scale, like I've started this one, you can see remnants of the image in there and I like how that it's become another shape altogether. To me this looks a bit skull-like. And then I will use other mixed media to, um, I start with something like that and then build upon it. Yeah, that's an example. I just want to thank you for being part of this and I hope you can take some of these techniques into your own practice um, and experiment with them and make them your own. You know, they're really simple, everyday um, things that you can do. Um, yeah, by changing the collage material, you could experiment with different stencil material as well and just the amount of intricacy you want to do in those sort of stencil cuts as well. Um, I hope you enjoyed today and yeah, good luck with your practice.